to Sunday school. I can do anything. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible to you. Right eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. about how brave he was. What made Noah special? The Bible says in Genesis chapter six that Noah was a righteous man. In fact, he was the only righteous man on earth. You see, the earth had gotten to this place where everybody just wanted to do whatever they wanted and they weren't kind, they made terrible bad decisions. And then there was Noah. Noah was a friend of God. Noah loved and respected and honored God with his choices and decisions. God chose Noah to do something crazy. I mean, big crazy. I know this is really hard to imagine, 
But just think about this for a second. Up until this point in history, rain didn't exist. What? Like it had never rained, ever. Water falling from the sky, crazy thing, okay? And all of a sudden, Noah starts building a giant boat. But people were like, what in the world do we need a boat for? There's no body of water that's really big here that's big enough for this giant boat you're creating. What are you doing, Noah? You are a little like thinking not straight here. People started making fun of Noah. They were teasing him. They probably called him names and ridiculed him, made fun of him for making this giant thing. I mean, like it had like water falling from the sky. This is, this, no, this is weird. Well, people are making fun of him. Do you know what Noah does? Noah says to the people, the very people who are making fun of him and God, you know, this ark has room for you. You could come. The Lord's going to wipe this earth out with a giant flood. You're going to die. You could save your life right now by coming with me onto the boat. He invites the very people who are making fun of him to come and live with him. Of course, they say no because they think they know better. Don't we always think we know better? They choose not to listen to Noah. Noah had a choice to make. Was he going to do the easy thing and stop building the boat and not get made fun of and fit in with everybody else? Or was he gonna continue to honor God and build this giant boat for a body of water that didn't exist yet? What did he choose to do? Well, of course Noah chose to continue to build this, this boat. And he built it for a really long time. So. I don't know if you've ever been made fun of, which really is not an enjoyable experience, but like maybe only got made fun of like at school or maybe just like while you were playing at the playground and then you were able to leave and that person didn't make fun of you anymore because you never saw them ever again. Noah got made fun of the entire time it took him to build the ark and it took him years to build the ark. I mean, we're talking about years to build this thing. When it was finally done, do you think the teasing stopped? No. But now it gets worse because what did God tell him to do with this boat? Uh, two of every kind of animal. So here we go. Now we see these animals going on to the boat and, and it wasn't just like, oh, there's animals on the boat. It's like, we have the ferocious lion who is now going to be on the same boat as the gentle lamb. I don't know if you know anything about the food chain, but like lions eat lambs. And here we go. They're both on the same boat together and they're not eating each other. I mean, animals from all over, every single kind of land animal on the earth got onto this boat. And people were like, this is weird. And they continued to make fun of Noah. And then what else did Noah do? He gets on the boat. So he and his family, they get onto the boat. Do you think the teasing stopped? No. People continued to make fun of Noah. And here he is on the boat waiting. And then what happened? This first wet water droplet falls from the sky and then another and another and people are starting to go what is this this is weird and the next thing we know the water starts falling really heavy and steady and the water starting to come up off the ground and before we know it this boat is now floating on water oh noah no, let's get off here there we go and people were scared. And now they weren't making fun of Noah anymore. They were calling for help, but it was too late because God had already shut the doors to this boat and there was no way on because they didn't listen. Hello, boys and girls.
boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Weirs. I'm here to show you how to talk to a cat. Are you ready? This is Molly. Can you say hi to Molly? Hi, Molly. Let's see. Oh, that's Molly's bum. Poor Molly. Meow, meow. She's awfully quiet today. Let me try again. No, she's not listening today. She's ignoring me. I'm going to try one more time. Nope. Sorry, guess I can't talk to cats. Oops. Those people, they had that chance, but they chose to ignore Noah. You know, probably there got to be a point where they were really scared and they started saying, Noah, will you let us on? But you know what? It was too late. God had already shut the doors to the boat. He had already given them a chance for a very long time, years and years and years, that people had to turn from their wicked ways and honor and obey God, and they chose not to. And of course, every living thing on the earth died, perished, but God protected those who were on the boat. The waters stopped falling from the sky but there's water all over the earth. So here's Noah still on the boat with the, the animals. Eventually, after a long time, the water start to recede. That means go away. So they're getting lower and lower until the boat lands on dry ground. Well, does Noah and his family get out right away? No, they don't, they can't. Think about it when we have a warm day and the snow starts to melt and the ground gets really muddy and gross. Well, now imagine that around the entire globe. I mean, there was no way Noah and his family and the animals could get out. So they stayed on the boat for a little while longer and a little while longer and a little while longer. And eventually, Noah sends out a raven. Well, this isn't a raven, but he sends out a raven. And the raven flies and comes back because there's no place to land. And he flies and he comes back and there's no place to land. And this happens for a little while. And then Noah sends out a dove. This isn't a dove, but Noah sends out a dove and the dove flies away and it comes back with an olive branch in its mouth. It does this, but they still don't get out. Noah waits seven more days, and this time he lets the dove go again. But the dove doesn't come back. It doesn't come back because now there's a place for the dove to make its home. It's ready to live, which means that now no one knows it's safe to get out of the ark. So the doors open of the boat, and everybody gets out. Well, this was a pretty special thing. God had saved Noah, a righteous man, from destruction. But God knew he did not want to do this ever again. He promised Noah that he would never flood the earth ever again. And he showed this promise of love for Noah in the form of what? That's right, a rainbow. So Noah and his family, they set up an altar. They thanked God for his provision. They recognized what God had done for them. And God put a rainbow in the sky. And every time we see that rainbow, we remember it's God's promise. Yes, there's a scientific explanation for a rainbow, which is really cool. But we know that this rainbow was placed there by God to remind us there's always room for salvation. He saved Noah and his family because they chose to listen to God. He saved the animals because he loves them. He loved Noah and his family, and he loves you. It is Miss Shalana, and we are back 
for another very cool science experiment. And for today's experiment, you are going to need a variety of things that you can find around the house. The first thing that you're going to need, you are going to need some type of tall glass or tall container, because we're gonna be pouring some different stuff into this. And you want it to be clear, because if we can't see it, it doesn't look very cool. So some type of tall glass or tall plastic bottle would also work um, that we're gonna be pouring some different things into today. What I have in here to start is just about an inch of water, okay? So that's the first thing that we need. The other things that you are going to need might be different based on what you have in your house, but basically what you want is different liquids and different liquids that have different densities. And what I mean by that is basically how thick is the liquid. So I have gathered up some examples for you and you can go with your parents or guardian and look in your cupboard or your pantry and see if you have these to do our experiment today. I have some dish soap, shampoo would also work. I have some syrup, some oil, and I have some corn syrup. And then I also have food coloring because I want to make our water colorful because I like color. So the other thing that you're going to need, this is kind of just an optional thing, but it's kind of fun, is a few small items and make sure you choose items that you don't mind if they're going to get very sticky and very dirty because they will be getting very sticky and very dirty. So I have a paper clip and a nickel. Those are my two small items that we're going to be putting into our cup at the end. So if you could find two little things, three little things, four little things that you won't mind if they get um, a little sticky, we can use those at the end too. So once you have gathered up your supplies, here's what we are going to be doing. We are going to be making something called a density tower. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take all these different things that are all liquids, right? Matter, that's what makes up everything, can be in three states. It can be a solid, kind of like this table. It can be a liquid, like water that we drink, or it can be a gas, like the air around us that we breathe. So today we have all different kinds of liquids. The main thing that you might have noticed is different about them is how dense they are. And that basically means with a liquid, how thick are they? So if I was to take my bottle of corn syrup and kind of turn it, see how slowly that that moves? That's because corn syrup is dense. So it's really, really thick, right? As opposed to water, water is less dense than corn syrup, less thick, okay? Now, the really interesting property with this means that if we put all these things together, usually if we mix liquids together, they all kind of mix and we get like a big mud puddle of stuff, right? The cool thing, if we use materials that are different densities, we can put them all together, but they're not just gonna look like a big mud puddle. It's gonna look really cool. So let's get started. I'm just going to add some food coloring to my water because I think that it looks cooler if it's green rather than just clear. So we'll just add a drop of green. There we go. Watch. <laughs> The other really cool thing that I like about this experiment is it doesn't really matter the order that you pour the liquids into the glass. Isn't that cool? They are going to sort themselves out wherever they want to fall based on their density and it doesn't matter the order that we pour them in. So let's start first with vegetable oil. Now I want you to take a guess where you think the vegetable oil is going to go. You have two guesses. Do you think it's gonna go above the water or below the water? So hopefully you took a guess. Now you can see if your guess was correct. I'm gonna really gently pour in my oil. Can you tell where it's going? Is it above or below the water? <gasps> it's above the water. Okay, look at that. We've already started to form our density tower. We have water on the bottom and now we have oil. Okay, let's pick some syrup. Everybody loves syrup. 
Where do we think, we now have even more options, where do we think our syrup's gonna fall? We could have below the water, we could have in between the water and the oil, or we could have on top of the oil. What do you think? Okay, let's see if you're right. I'm gonna really gently pour in my syrup. Where's it going? Can you tell? Okay, let's give it a minute to set there. Where did it go? It went all the way to the bottom. So now we have our syrup, our green water, and our oil. Look how cool that is. Syrup, green water, and oil. So that means out of these three things, which one is the most dense? The one on the bottom, right? That's the thickest liquid. The one on the bottom is the syrup. Okay, let's add another one here. I have some dish soap. Now this one's a little tricky because we know when we mix soap and water, it makes a lot of bubbles. So I'm gonna try to be really careful as I pour this in to not make bubbles because I don't really wanna ruin it even though bubbles are fun. Ooh, let's see where this is gonna go. I'm gonna pour it in really gently. So where does it look like the soap went? Kind of looks like the soap is between the maple syrup and the water, right? We've got maple syrup, soap, water, oil. Okay, now for our very last one. The last one that you're going to have is our corn syrup. So your last guess. Where do you think this really thick corn syrup is going to end up in our density tower? Okay, whatever you get, let's see if you are correct. I'm going to go ahead and keep it to the edge. I'm pouring. Oh, it's kind of settling. It's taking a little bit of time to settle. But it's going to go to the very bottom. So if you guessed the bottom, you are correct. We can kind of see it starting to settle over there. But because it's so thick, it'll take a little bit of time for it to settle. Look how cool that is. We just made a density tower, all those different liquids that we mixed together, but they didn't actually really mix together. And we can start to see here, we've got some bubbles. What do we think those bubbles are from? Those bubbles are from the soap down here that we added in. So we get some extra bubbles for fun there. If you have other liquids that you wanna try mixing together, go for it, right? We can see if it may work, it may not work. And that's the really cool thing with science. So the last thing though that I wanna try is these two items, my paper clip and my coin. Because based on their density, they might fall all the way through our jar or they might fall and stay somewhere else. So let's start with our nickel first. If I drop in my nickel, let's see how far down through it's gonna go. Where did it go? Oh, it was heavy enough that it went all the way down to the bottom. What about our paper clip? If I drop my paper clip in. Oh, look how slowly it went through. It barely made it through. Now it's kind of stuck in the corn syrup, not quite at the bottom. So you can grab some other things too and try adding them to your density tower. Just be prepared that they're gonna get a little sticky and see if you can find anything light enough that maybe it can't even make it through the oil or maybe it'll get stopped in the soap or the syrup. So that is our density tower. If you made your own density tower, I would love to see a photo of it. I think these are so cool. So if you made one, take a photo and send it to the church so that we can see your beautiful density towers.